My name is Lorcan O'Herlihy, and I'm principal of LOHA, Lorcan Early Architects. And uh, we have a practice of about 12 people here right now. Uh, it ranges between 12 and 16 people. Uh, I think architecture, frankly, is something which is about, and uh, it's about uh, the dynamic of habitat, it's the dynamic of space, it's the dynamic of environment. Uh, it's something where uh, we as architects are fortunate enough to be able to mold and uh, uh, an environment where people can either live or work and I think architecture to me represents that spatial. It's something about being in, in the environment in the space and that's something that we, we do actually bring to all of our work. We actually engage our projects from that standpoint. We look at the program, we understand that people are going to be in the space and that's the evolution and we formulate in a sense that uh, that uh, using working with materials and we we create these kind of spaces and I think that's to me is about spatial architecture is about spatial it's about environment it's about using it's about the use mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to start to really look at not only architecture but look at the public uh, the political and social aspects of the buildings we're doing we need to take responsibility for that uh, I think it's something that uh, it's critical uh, whether we like it or not, we are political. Uh, I think that uh, when we deal with our work, and especially with our work of recent, we've been dealing with a lot of um, housing projects within the market economy. Uh, and uh, we've discovered not only through our, our rental buildings and our other projects that there's a lot of uh, social political aspects of these that we need to be aware of. And they help to really uh, kind of, in a sense, uh, define the projects. We need to, and when we get these projects, and these are in the public realm, and I think that's critical. It's very important architects to play a role in the public realm. Uh, it, it, we become isolated if we don't, and I think that's something that's very, very important. I think within Los Angeles, most architects uh, start with uh, uh, single family houses. Uh, that's the way it starts here in Los Angeles. The patrons of architecture here in Los Angeles uh, used to be a uh, husband and wife who would ca call up an architect to design their house. And that was something that was uh, how a lot of architects, including Neutra and Schindler, uh, uh, started their work and that that evolved into for me having done that for about 10 or 12 years it, it evolved into taking the ideas of the single family house and and rethinking that within larger uh, 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 projects housing projects and I think that was what was very important for us we got into it because I had a client who admired my work and he was actually studied as an architect and he ended up becoming a developer and he wanted to do important architecture within the housing projects within the housing realm um, and I think that's how we ended up getting into it based that we proved ourselves within rethinking the conventions of the single-family house and he wanted to do the same thing within housing projects and that that was our kind of introduction into the into those types of projects um, I think Los Angeles is a place where you can speculate and uh, we chose to, with, uh, with we use the term ruthless optimism, to tackle condominiums, to tackle housing projects. Very difficult typology to be able to bring ideas to it because you have to deal with the speculative market, uh, but also in terms of the framework of housing, it tends to be something that's very challenging to bring ideas and architecture those types of projects. I think it is very important. It's, it's interesting. We, uh, we think that within innovation, I think we always use the term that we build ideas and each project is driven by one idea. Uh, we looked at the way we work is we analyze projects, we look at a num uh, number of alternative strategies towards a, a solution, we then pick one and we develop that. Innovation for us is something about innovation within architecture. We are, we do uh, embrace architecture. We're very optimistic that we can change the project, whether it's a challenging uh, project or not. Uh, if someone comes to us and wants us to design a warehouse, we can do a warehouse. If someone comes to us and says we want to do a housing project, but we have very strict financial constraints on it, we know we can make architecture out of it. 
And I think within that, I think is very important. So innovation is not just a formal innovation, but more that's more a cultural and social innovation is what drives our work. Formally, we're very confident we can do buildings that rethink uh, form, rethink space, rethink uh, skin. We know we can do that. We address floor plates, wall plates, ceiling plates. We look at the spatial kind of parameters of projects. But ultimately, for us, innovation is trying to rethink the idea of how people live in environments. And that's very important to us. Um, we do. We certainly do that. Uh, I think for us personally, uh, competitions play a role. Uh, not as much as other firms. Uh, I started when I started my practice. Uh, uh, I had to be uh, developed and, and build this practice through my own resources, financial resources. So ideally, I needed work, and it was about work. So I think my first five or ten years was about getting a commission and pushing that idea, but we needed to be paid to do it. Uh, over the following last eight or nine years, we've, uh, we've had opportunities where we have done competitions. And, uh, uh, and I think it's very important, uh, as you say, it's very important to address these competitions because it begins us to open our ideas to alternative solutions. Uh, we did the Prado many years ago in Spain. Of course, I know, uh, I think Moneo in the end won it. I'm not sure that was a competition to do. I don't think in the, I think the final tense uh, winners were all from Madrid. So that was not really, not, was not gonna happen. But uh, for us, it's very important to do competitions. You have to think about ideas. But frankly, I do, I have taught for many years uh, at SciArc and also the Architectural Association. And they have always been part of my, um, my DNA, so to speak. So I've always played the role of practitioner uh, teacher. Uh, at the, at recently, it's been more about the practitioner but we think within our office, we actually bring innovation through each individual project. And we do think that there's a way to speculate on architecture within a practice, but also be open to um, um, innovation through other kind of resources, whether it's competitions or simply just being engaging younger uh, architects and engaging uh, dialogue with other architects. I think we really do, we do have um, a, a, a reputation for uh, working with people in a collaborative way. I think all of our clients, I'd have to say, are very uh, comfortable with working with us and we're equally comfortable working with them. Um, they, they tend to come to us with constraints and parameters. Um, we actually listen which is very important. So from a social aspect, or how we, uh, the network aspect is we are, we, we make every effort to collaborate, communicate with the clients, also internally in the office. We do uh, work with everyone, everyone here in the office, in, in, no matter how, ex how much experience they have, they are involved with the design process. So from a networking standpoint, I think we have a collaborative structure, and that's awfully important. It's crucial, because ultimately we want the best idea and we have to find the right way to get that best idea. And that is by listening and open uh, and allow everyone to contribute. Uh, I think that's very important to our practice. Um, I, yeah, it's been, a ch it's been challenging but good. Uh, I, uh, from the early years, I started my practice in 1990 and uh, my first few years was quite busy. I ended up, I had my early years was, my apprenticeship was with, uh, actually early on was Kevin Roach, John Dinkle and Associates, who was a great late modernist architect in the 80s and the 70s. And after about three years, I did have the opportunity to join I Am Pain Partners, and I worked on the Louvre Museum for about three years. And I was one of the youngest uh, team members on that project. And uh, for me, those early years taught me how to communicate and also work in an environment uh, with other people. Um, after those uh, five years, I wanted to step out of architecture and I painted for a few years in New York City. I was in New York so uh, in, uh, and I uh, uh, had a studio in, on Walker Street near Canal Street in, in downtown New York and uh, ended up uh, painting for about two years. And that was very important for me because it was an opportunity to step away to look at uh, painting as another medium. And it taught me a lot about architecture by stepping away and looking at the, and engaging the idea of painting. Um, after a few years, I chose to step back into architecture uh, and I joined Stephen Hall Architects. And Stephen primarily was a mentor for me. I learned a lot about architecture, learned a lot about the kind of passion of architecture through him and a kind of focus and commitment to ideas. 
and on being uncompromising, which is also very important to try to be uncompromising in terms of architecture. I think that was something I learned from Stephen. Every project we do in our office is driven by an idea. And uh, from that like early years, because uh, we're talking about 19 years here, I then came to Los Angeles, started my practice. And I started with a small practice of about three or four people doing houses, single family, I uh, also did additions to houses, but you know what, uh, single family is, it is a place where you can really speculate about design, and I think that's what's very nice about Los Angeles as a place. It's a great place to uh, be able to engage ideas, and also with clients, they're open to uh, new ideas, and they want you to exceed their expectations, and that's what would drive our work. Uh, but the way I kept my practice going was my first 10 years was, was a combination of teaching, which to me was what I was thrilled about because it had kept me fresh and also thinking about new ideas. Um, and also my colleagues, I taught at SIRC and a good friend of uh, mine was Eric Kahn who's been teaching for a number of years at, at SIRC. And Eric and I were, were old friends from college and also in terms of teaching, I learned a lot from him as a teacher. But my first 10 years was combining practice with, with, with uh, teaching, which helped out financially. Uh, the last nine or 10 years, I made a decision to focus primarily on the practice. And I think we had certain kind of tipping points in my practice, which is, was beneficial. And that was um, my own house, actually in Venice, which I, fill, I finished in 2003, uh, was, very, was very important to us because it allowed uh, me to get new types of clients from that project. And uh, the big move, the tipping point, was doing um, the uh, housing projects, the jumping scale. And that was very important because then you get into the public realm. You address issues of the city, you address issues of people, and, uh, and I think that was crucial to be able to build a practice. Um, and that's, I think, why where we are today is we jump scale into housing projects and then we began to issues of public and private realms, we did, uh, issues of boundaries, issues of cities, how do cities grow. Um, and I think that's awfully important. Um, recently now we've transitioned from <coughs> excuse me, um, housing projects between 10 and 100 unit buildings to larger scale uh, mixed use air, uh, projects where we're not only looking at 400 housing units, social housing we're doing, we're actually we're working with the Skid Row Housing Trust here in Los Angeles, which is homeless housing. And that's a very important project to us. It really addresses critical issues of how do we house the homeless. Um, and I think we're addressing that issue in a big way. Um, and we're working with them on a number of different sites in Los Angeles, looking at the proper, uh, find an ideal site where we can actually accomplish what we want to do. And that is to maximize housing for the homeless in Los Angeles, which is very problematic right now. We're also looking at like workforce housing in Kauai as well. And that one is actually something equally as important. In Kauai, it needs housing. It needs social housing. So that's something that we're now shifting into, which is more like more like a workforce housing, homeless housing projects. And that's very important to us. So that's another jump scale also because the sizes, the, the projects are equally uh, even larger. It's an interesting question. I think that each school has its own pedagogical approach. Uh, SIRC has is one has its right now. Um, interestingly enough, I always thought early in the early years, Columbia in New York was an interesting school because uh, they were addressing uh, a certain kind of approach to their work. Uh, it started with Greg Lynn early years, uh, where they were really looking at uh, a different kind of strategy than uh, like SIRC, for example. SIRC I thought was about craft, it was about building, it was about engaging projects uh, physically in, in, in a certain way, and that was because they they had land. If you go to Sire, it has a big parking lot. You can build things. Columbia was very constrained. It had you. You only had the room uh, for, your, for your computer, and you were very tight in terms of where you could work. So it made perfect sense that the computer played a big role in terms of the kind of education of the architect in Columbia. I think what's problematic is when other schools try to replicate that, and they, within a different context. And I think that's always the challenging thing within schools. Uh, right now, I think UCLA is a fascinating school with Los Angeles. I think uh, um, Itoshi Abe is a very interesting selection to be able to run that school because I think he's going to be very important to that school. But I think for as a young architect, you need to decide, it's very difficult to know at the age of 18 what exactly you want to do. Um, probably to have a, an education where you're open to a number of different approaches. 
and then over time you will find out what's particular uh, interested to you uh, to you in particular uh, as a student. I think that's awfully important. Very difficult to know. It's very difficult to know early on, but I think you have to leave yourself that opportunity to learn while you're in school and also after. I think it's very important. Um, I was very fortunate. Um, I think within uh, schools I learned a lot from my colleagues, frankly, more so than necessarily the teachers. I thought my colleagues were equally as important and we had a very a tight knit of uh, friends who learned from each other when we were in school. So um, to answer your question, I think, um, um, I think you need to be open to a number of different approaches and there are a lot of very good schools very good schools. I am I can't pick one versus the other but I also think within Los Angeles Quinn Yuma is doing some uh, interesting things with USC as well. Uh, I think both UCLA and USC intri intriguingly enough are engaging the Pacific Rim by bringing in Hitoshi Abe and also Quinn Yuma into run those schools which is a different it's a big shift so I think that's quite interesting about Los Angeles. Uh, a good thinker someone who knows how to think. Uh, ideally, it would be nice if they have, obviously, uh, a capacity to be able to work with Maya and Rhino, of course, but also, I mean, AutoCAD is something that's not that, uh, we need it, of course, but I don't look for that primarily. I look for someone who knows how to think, and uh, I think that's the, that's the start, and also passionate about the work. <coughs> Excuse me, we need to have people who are very, very committed and focused on architecture and our practice. It's, I expect it, and uh, I think that they want to be in that environment. But I'm also interested in having them, uh, I do think in terms of an education architect, it's very important also to um, be able to have different experiences. It really is. Uh, I would say if people came to my practice and they worked between three and five years, that's a good period to spend in a practice. Um, and I think that's okay. It's okay to move around. Um, but at some point, I think for uh, most people, um, you know, within my practice, I like people to really engage architecture, embrace buildings. I think it's very important to know that we are about building projects and we want to really test our ideas in a built form. And that's challenging. It means that um, it's not, it, it, there's a looseness to what we do with our buildings, but also there's like, a, a way, the way I see it is I, uh, I use this term inflected logic, where you have a rational approach to doing buildings, but we try to inflect a different type of logic to it that makes um, somewhat unique. Um, I actually, Bob Ivey, in a lecture he gave uh, recently, he's the, he's the editor of Architecture Record, used the term transverse thinking. So we like to have that aspect within all our project. And to us, that's the idea. That's the big idea in our project. We take something that begins, that shifts the, the kind of convention of what it should be and allow that aspect of that transverse thinking or inflected logic. And I think people here uh, who are working in my practice, I, I hope that they, and they do, begin to understand that. And then that's very important for them to understand the culture of our office. Very important when you join a practice to embrace what, where you are and work very hard. And then, you, and then hopefully you stay and if not you move on but you, you put your every effort into it. But primarily being passionate about architecture. It does not work to be in this practice, in my practice, if you're not passionate about architecture. Absolutely does not work. I think, frankly, right now we 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 do have primarily architects. No, it's not. Um, we do, for example, in all projects, we look to collaborate, um, and that's very important. You know, with Bruce Mount Design, among others, we think that's very important. But within this structure, no, we don't have other. You're talking about having in other aspects of designers, whether it's planners or, or uh, interior design. We we primarily do it all here, um, but no, not within this the practice itself. Primarily, we're all architects. I mean, I think it's interesting that they do that. I think, frankly, um, I have such great admiration for graphic design and these others. I think you, to do it well, you have to do it completely. I think for us to be able to do architecture and do it well, we have to be very focused on that. But with respect to that, I admire other like gifted graphic design firms, and I let, I let them and want them to do the work. We do collaborate, but I also think that some, occasionally, like for our website, we've internally designed that website 
but actually we worked uh, ultimately uh, uh, Caroline who ended up uh, uh, completing the website worked for me as, a, as an intern and then she started her own graphic design firm so she took it and she helped us and she basically did the graphic design in the end but we internally designed that uh, and then we brought her on board and worked with her on it and she was great so I mean ideally we do from our own work we do have a graphic aspect of how we do our work but I think that I prefer to uh, collaborate with people who are, are gifted in, that, in those different fields as opposed to doing all in. I think some, sometimes that can be somewhat challenging. I think SFM has done a great job. We're working with them right now uh, with four other firms on a project and uh, they brought in these other architects to look at a larger kind of uh, development and uh, that's been a very good experience. Mm -hmm.